Here in this video, we're going to walk through setting up QuickBooks service items. And if there's one video to pay close attention to, this is it. Service items are the key to job costing in QuickBooks. And if you set this up right, you can set your company up for life. Our goal here is to show you how to set up service items in QuickBooks so that very simply and with almost no extra time or effort required, you can set up your QuickBooks to be able to do job costing and service profitability reporting using the information that's already in there. We're just going to make sure it gets entered correctly. The purpose of service items in QuickBooks primarily is for job costing. It does allow us to take a job and look at revenue versus expenses, but also allow us to break down that job in a little more detail so that we can see exactly what types of services we're making the most profit at. You can also take a step back and look at your gross profit by entire divisions or services. So bigger than just one job as a company, where are we making the most money? Where are we making the least money? And where do I need to focus my time and effort to fix? You can also take a look at time and hours by divisions or services using service items. So not just the profitability information, but if you're interested in knowing exactly how many hours you spent last year in install or maintenance work, uh, you can do that using service items as well. And it will help you get a deeper look into, into the profit and loss statement. Service items really help you to take a simple profit and loss statement and get a little more detailed or a little more complex when it comes to analyzing the number. Your profit and loss will stay nice, clean, and simple. And service items will help you break down the details so that you know exactly where you're making the most money and the least money in terms of company activities. A couple of basic settings you should check out first. Make sure that in your QuickBooks, under Edit, Preferences, there's a setting here on the left called Payroll and Employees. You'll want to click that, and then you'll want to click Company Preferences, and you want to make sure this item here is ticked on, Job Costing and Item Tracking for Paycheck Expenses. That will allow us to use items or service items on timesheets so that we can do job costing on labor. The other setting is less important. It's on the items and inventory pane, again on company preferences. And this time I just want you to check this one, warn if not enough inventory to sell. Now if you're selling t-shirts or you're doing something where you are tracking uh, physical inventory, you may want to leave that on. That'll help you know how much you've got left and warn you if you don't have enough left to sell. In landscape and contracting, this tends to be more annoying than it is useful. We're not typically dealing with items that we're inventorying. We're simply looking at using service items to help us categorize our costs. So you'll get a lot less annoying messages if you turn that item off. So what exactly is service items used for? The service items are used to classify both revenue and expenses by a little more detail than what you might have in your chart of accounts. For instance, my chart of accounts for payroll might just have one payroll account, but I could use service items to find out exactly how much payroll we're spending on construction work versus service work versus irrigation work. Construction, service, and irrigation could all be service items that would help me break that information down. You can also use service items to track customer invoices so that you know exactly how much revenue each different service type in your company is generating what you're spending on timesheets and what you're spending on vendor invoices. So what happens is when you enter an invoice in QuickBooks, either customer or vendor, and the same with timesheets, you assign them to service items. When you assign them to service items, the service item tells the cost where it should end up in the profit and loss statement. So there are accounts and service items so that it will automatically get funneled to the correct account on your profit and loss but they do act as buffers or groups before the profit and loss so that you can get more detailed in terms of your reporting or analysis than just your profit and loss. So what ends up happening is if I had a maintenance division that I wanted to track separately from my company's P&L, or at least more detailed from my company's P&L, all my customer invoices from the maintenance division, I could assign to the service item called grounds maintenance. I could also assign any timesheets for the maintenance division to the service item called grounds maintenance. And same with vendor invoices that I would use to enter things like materials or equipment rentals or subcontractors. Now, if I entered all those to that service item of maintenance, it will make sure it ends up in the right cost of goods sold and revenue accounts in my P&L. But more importantly, it'll allow me to generate a report on that maintenance service item so I can see how much revenue we earned in maintenance, 
and what we spent exactly on labor, materials, rental, subs, and those other things. The goal is to end up in QuickBooks with a report like this. This is my overall reporting or my high-level reporting on my different service items. Here I've set up different services for hardscaping, softscaping, extras, maintenance, snow and ice. And then within each group, you can see I've got a breakdown of what my materials cost, what my subcontractors cost, what my rental costs, and what I earned as well in those different groups. And each service item on the total line gives me what I spent, what I earned in revenue, and the difference, which is my gross profit. You can also take this information and apply it to jobs. So I can see on a job level how much I made and lost on a job, but I can also drive into the details of that job and to see exactly well, where were we making money and where did we lose money. And I can look at things like hardscape versus softscape versus extras. And what did we generate in invoice revenue? What did we spend on timesheet costs? What did we spend on material costs? And know my gross profit margin in each section. We're going to suggest you set up service items kind of look something like this. We're going to start with a parent or top level service item that's going to be used for customer invoices and it's going to be used for timesheets. These are the two most important things in job costing. How much did we earn in revenue and what did we spend in labor? We're going to get to materials in a second, but we'll use that top level. We'll create a service item called maintenance or grounds maintenance or any division that you want to track. And we're going to use that top level item for customer invoices and for timesheets. Now we need a spot to track vendor invoices for materials. So to do that, I could create a, another service item, but make it a sub item of my top level item. And I'll call that one maintenance materials. I'm not going to use that one for customer invoices. All my invoices are going to be run through that top level item, but I will use it for vendor invoices. So if I buy materials for my maintenance division, I'm going to use that sub item there, that maintenance materials service item, when I'm entering vendor invoices so that it classifies those materials correctly as maintenance materials. And I can do the same thing for subcontractors. So when I enter invoices for my subs, they're going to get applied to my maintenance subcontractor service item. And I could also do it for equipment rental. And you can create any number of service items. Maybe you want more detail with your material track. You want to know how much you spend on mulch versus chemicals versus uh, annuals or, or planting and by all means create as many as you need. The more you create, obviously the more complicated it is for somebody to enter things correctly, but you can choose the level of detail you want to track. I'll keep it simple for this example. So let's walk through actually how to set them up using a landscape lighting division as an example. So here I'm going to open my QuickBooks and I've already got those service items that I showed you in the report set up. Here for example is hardscaping. It's my top level item. That's what I'm going to use for customer invoices, and that's what I'm going to use for timesheets. Underneath that, I have hardscape materials. I'll use that every time I get a vendor invoice for hardscapes. I got hardscape subcontracting anytime I get an invoice for my subs that related to hardscape work. And I've got equipment rentals anytime I rented equipment for my hardscape division. And this will allow me to compare what I invoiced in revenue for hardscaping, what I spent on labor, because this is the top level items for customer invoices and timesheets. And then I can also see what I spent on materials, subs, and rental, and I know exactly what I earned in revenue and what I spent on the hardscape division. So let's see how to set that up now for a lighting division. I'm going to go item, new. Make sure the type is set to service item. I like to give all our numbers, or all our items, a number. It's a lot easier to code an invoice when I'm approving it with a number than it is to write landscape lighting on every invoice that deals with lighting. Far easier to write. 4050.0. So here I'm going to write landscape lighting. Now landscape lighting is going to be a top level item. I'm going to treat it almost like its own division. So I'm not going to break it down as a sub item. It will be a, a top level item. So I'm going to use this landscape lighting for both customer invoices and for timesheets. Now for my account, I want to make sure that all my landscape lighting revenue gets allocated to the correct account in my chart of accounts. And you may group it all under landscape installations. I have a specific chart of account for landscape lighting. It's an income account, 40,500 uh, specific for the lighting group. So I'm going to assign any customer invoices that get assigned to this landscape lighting service item need to end up in my installations lighting income account on my profit loss statement. Now what about timesheets? Where would I classify timesheets? 
you actually don't need to set an account for timesheets. The payroll item you use on your timesheet in QuickBooks will determine what chart of account it ends up with. So I actually don't need to do anything for this for timesheets. It'll end up in the right account automatically because it uses the payroll account for that. Even if I set a specific account here in my service item, it would ignore it anyway. It's going to use whatever your payroll item is set to as the account where that payroll or wage cost is going to end up. So that's all I need there to track customer invoices and timesheets. Now underneath this, I'm going to want to track my lighting materials. So again, I'm going to go item, new item, and it's a service item again. I use the same number as lighting, 4050, and then I just add a dot, and dot five is a code for materials that we use. You can come up with any coding system you'd like. We always keep dot five as materials. That way I know any first number dot five means it's a material account. So I'll call this lighting materials. Now this one is a sub item of my lighting top level item. So I'm going to tick that off and drop this down and I'm going to make it a sub item of landscape lighting. Now I'm never going to use this for customer invoices. Again, all my customer invoices are going to go through that top level item. So the account I need to use for this is my vendor account or my materials account for uh, the cost of, of uh, light materials. So I'm going to drop this down. This should be a cost of goods sold account then because it refers to materials. And I do have one already set up here. So this relates here to my chart of accounts. And I'm going to assign my lighting material service item. Any vendor invoices that get assigned to this need to end up in my lighting materials cost of goods sold account on my income statement. So I'm going to pick lighting materials there. And that's it. Click OK. Now you do the same thing for subcontracting. I'm going to add another one here. You can hit new. I get it again. It's a service item. This one's going to be 40, 50, dot seven, dot seven being our subcontractors, lighting subs. It's a sub item of lighting. And the account down here is whatever I use for subcontractors. So again, for us, it's a cost of goods sold account. I find my subcontractors cost of goods sold account. I select that. So again, any lighting subcontractors are going to end up in my regular subcontracting chart of account, but I'll be able to see exactly what I spent on lighting subs. That's what the service item is going to do for me. So I'll hit OK. And now you can see how this is starting to come together. Top level item for landscape item. We're going to use that for customer invoices, and we're going to use that for timesheets. Another one for materials. That's a sub item, and that only points to my cost of goods sold account for lighting materials. And I have another sub item. And that points to my cost of goods sold account for subcontractors. And again, I can create as many of these as I need. I want to keep it simple. So for those of you who like visual, instead of walking through the example, that landscape lighting account, that service item, customer invoices are going to get assigned to it. And it's going to make sure it dumps it to the right income account because that's the account I assigned when I created that service item. I'm also going to book timesheets to my landscape lighting account. And they're going to end up in the right field payroll cost of goods sold account. That's what I was mentioning. You don't even need to set that in your service item. It'll work automatically. But I do want to use the service item for employee timesheets so I can compare invoice revenue for lighting versus what we spend on payroll for lighting. Taking that to the next step, we created a sub item called landscape lighting materials. So underneath our top level item, we, we created a sub item for that. And we would use that when we're entering vendor invoices for any materials we bought for our lighting division. And because I set that account to link to my lighting materials chart of account in my chart of accounts, that's where any invoices that I assign to the service item lighting materials will end up in that cost of goods sold account in my chart of accounts. We're going to go through adding each one of those in a few minutes. So you'll see real examples of how we create a customer invoice using that, how we create a timesheet using service items, how we create vendor invoices using timesheet or service items. Now stick with us in the rest of the videos to see real examples of all that. I'm going to take those items there that we created and we're going to use them for customer invoices. We're going to use them for timesheets and we're going to use them for vendor invoices. And all that comes up in the next couple of videos. If you're setting up service items now, my biggest recommendation is to keep it simple. The more service items you have, the more complex your chart of accounts has to be. 
The more service items you have, the more difficult it is for people to enter, the more you have to break down your tasks for your guys in the field. And what I can tell you is if you have too much, what's going to happen is people aren't going to enter it accurately. And when people don't enter it accurately, you won't be able to trust the information, and then you're wasting your time doing all of this. Start simple. Make it easy to use, easy to follow. And if you decide you want to get more detailed later, go for it. Now all your staff will be used to it, and you can slowly introduce the details. Far better to keep it simple and get it working correctly, and then worry about getting all the information you want. Train simple, complicate later. The problem, again, with too many details, especially for field staff, is that their time in the field, they're going to be expected to break it down by each different task that you've set up or each different detail you've set up. The more that they have to switch their tasks, either on a paper timesheet or in LMN time, the less likely they are to be accurate in the time tracking. The less likely they are going to be accurate, the more useless your, your information is going to be. It's going to be there, but it's not going to be right. And when it's not right, then there was no point in having any of this in the first place. So stick with us in the next videos. We're going to show you live examples of how to use those service items using real QuickBooks invoices and timesheets, etc. How they link to LMN time, how they link to LMN estimates, and how this whole system fits together to give you the reporting. Your profit and loss will stay nice, clean, and simple, and service items will help you break down the details so that you know exactly where you're making the most money and the least money in terms of company activities. A couple of basic settings you should check out first. Make sure that in your QuickBooks, under Edit, Preferences, there's a setting here on the left called Payroll and Employees. You'll want to click that, and then you'll want to click Company Preferences, and you want to make sure this item here is ticked on. Job costing and item tracking for paycheck expenses. 